So this is part two of the quick look at the anatomy of the knee. I'm just going to zoom out of this 3D model so you can see what we're see what we've got. Um, this is a female figure. The next part of the video is going to be looking at a male figure. Um, there are some important differences, but that's for more advanced lectures. What I'm going to do here is just give you a heads up really about the things to look out for. Um, in the knee, and we're really going to concentrate on the front view. Um, the back has quite a lot going on, um, might deal with that another time, but for now it's the front view that we'll look at. So, to begin with, let's start with the kneecap, and I'm just going to fill that in red. That'll be, that's the point most people are familiar with. You can feed it on yourself, and you can use that to uh, navigate your way around. Um, your reference or the model you're drawing, whatever you're referring to. So the thing about the kneecap is that it's really floating in between the, um, or just over the end of the femur, the bone of the thigh, and um, it's attached above and below by these strap-like tendons. So we covered some of this in um, the first video on the knee, but really just trying to get a look at this in 3D now. So the tendon below makes its way down to the this kind of prominent uh, knobbly bit of the tibia, uh, which is sometimes people call that the, uh, the kneeling point, or more technically the tibial tuberosity. Above you have this other strap which connects the kneecap to the quadricep muscles. Now this bit of tendon presents itself as a rather flat or neutral plane on the live figure. The next part of the video I'll be doing a quick sculpture sketch of the knee and it'll be a, a knee kind of in tension and you're going to see this area um, being bounded by the quadricep muscles um, quite clearly. Also look out for it um, in any reference you're working with or when you're looking at old master paintings or um, CGI models and so on. So behind the kneecap you've got this area of fat and that's going right the way behind the kneecap is fat and fluid. There's lots of things going on there, but I'm just going to colour this yellow to signify fat. When you um, dissect the human body and you look at the fat deposits, it's very often bright yellow. It looks like a kind of um, sweet corn. Let's look at the elements of the bone that we can see. Here's the medial condyle of the femur, and here seeing a bit of that. We're also seeing a bit of the tibia at various points. Here's the tibial tuberosity key point and this line, the tibial plateau. So actually there and there on this side bounded by muscle, on that side you're going straight into this flat plane of the shin bone which is right beneath the skin. In the side we've got the head of the fibula which is a pretty basic bone, it's really just a long stick with, uh, and you only see it at this end and at the other end which is at the outside ankle. It's key um, for this really prominent tendon, the biceps femoris, to attach to from the back. So that's really coming down. And that's what's creating this um, quite straight line on the outside of the knee. Whereas on the inside, you've got the um, muscles of the sartorius, the gracilis. Um, others kind of all wrapping around the inside of the knee like that, padding it out. 
I'm kind of blending into that bone plane. This aspect of the muscles of the back of the leg coming around to the front are important. A sort of subtle bit of the contour there that's worth studying. And finally, we've got the iliotibial band, this thickened bit of what's called fascia. Fascia is like a cling film, like in America you call it saran wrap, um, like a, a film that uh, shrink wraps the muscles but does so in a way that allows them to move upon one another. In certain places of the body, this, this stuff thickens. And a really good example is at your wrist, there's a, you can't feel this or see it really on the surface, but there's a thickening of this stuff and it's like a kind of bracelet. And what it does is it holds down the tendons of your forearm muscles, which can, which are very, very long without this, um, Without this bracelet of, of fascia, they would kind of flap around all over the place. If you think about it a bit like a uh, like a cable tidy that you get for your um, gadgets, it's just like that at the wrist. But here you've got this really long thickening of um, this stuff, and this triangular um, portion of it. Which is shooting straight down the leg. So you do see this very often in certain poses, though it does come and go somewhat. It drives its way down here to uh, a point on the tibia, which I believe is called Gerdi's tubercle. Um, not essential information, but. Um, but Good to know that there is a point to which it goes. So you do get these, because um, sometimes you see this and people confuse it for this. So just watch out for that. Um, and up here there's uh, another sort of thickening. It's named, I don't know if it still is, but it's named for a while after Paul Richet, the anatomist. It was called Richet's Band or Band of Richet. And then finally you got these portions of the of the quads let's do that in the right direction the fibers notice the fibers are at right angles to this edge so these fibers are going that way these fibers are going this way so that that's so that they can pull on that edge if they need to so that makes kind of sense so there's a good overview of the features of the front of the knee. Uh, in the second part of the video I'll do a time lapse, a uh, quick sketch in 3D for you so you can see it all come together.